A limited palette painting, an intermediate Art Nouveau watercolor project by Hajra Meeks. So we've been learning how to paint from the masters of the Art Nouveau movement, and we've been using limited palettes. Today we're going to use an adjacent complementary tetrad, which is a palette we have not used before. So here's a generic color wheel, which you can find at any art store. And we've been making our own color wheels by choosing different triads for yellow, blue, and red. And it makes a very cool, neat triad and color scheme for you to work with rather than just the standard yellow, red, and blue. And I've got a whole handful of these that I've done for different projects, and you can see how different all of them look. And it's very fun to play with triads, but sometimes it's easy to forget that there's a lot more that you can do with color schemes than just different triads. You can see based on these two color wheels how different you can make the triad color scheme. We have experimented in previous videos with complementary, which is two colors on the opposite side of the wheel, or analogous colors next to each other on a wheel. Today we're going to experiment with an adjacent complementary tetrad, which is basically two pairs of complements. So two pairs of colors opposite on the wheel. In this case, I'm going to use green and blue-green and red and red-orange. On an alternative color wheel, instead of it being red and red-orange, it's actually magenta and red, which is what I'm going to use. Today I'll be using inks to make this, so let's get started. I'm using my Dr. Phil Martin's India inks, and they behave differently from watercolor because they're permanent, which means that they don't pick up after you put them down, and that can have some positives and some minuses. I'm going to be using my plexiglass palette, which is usually my travel palette, but the reason I'm using that is this stuff is really hard to get off of a palette, unlike watercolor. So I like to put it on a plexiglass palette because then I can just put some rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and wipe it off because it does tend to dry in a skin that's really hard to get off of a ceramic palette. So I'm putting down green, teal, red, and magenta. I'm also going to put down the same colors in places where I'm going to mix them with other colors. So I'm going to put down some teal in the center, in between the green and the teal, and in between the magenta and the teal. So I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of these colors. I'm going to put them in the center to make neutrals, and I'm going to put them in between the colors next to them so I can make different adjacent colors. Then I'm going to mix them all up. You can see that I'm getting a lot of really nice mixes that I wouldn't get if I didn't decide to mix all of them together. So I could have the four main colors, but it's really just a shame not to get all the colors you can get in between and also by mixing them together as a neutral. So that's why I like to make a little color wheel for each palette so I can see all the colors I have to play with in my limited color scheme before I get started. This is really helpful because you can see that and then decide on what part of your painting you want to apply these colors. You can also then see how you're going to make your thumbnails. You can make a few different thumbnails and it's a lot easier to mix and match colors and make new thumbnails if you have a little color wheel for your limited color scheme already. So you can see I have my four main colors that I've put down and then my neutral in the center and the color mixes they're making in between. I'm just picking them straight off of my plexiglass palette and putting them on my little wheel. So noticeably absent on this wheel is a yellow. There is no yellow in this color scheme. It's basically a red and green complementary color scheme with one kind of red and green and another kind of red and green, which is why it's called an adjacent complementary tetrad. In this case, we use the red and green complements. I'm going to add some water. It kind of looks like I'm dropping it on my hand, but that's because this palette is see-through. Um, I need to do this because unlike with watercolors, these are not um, going to reconstitute if once they dry out. You can see on the left there that purple is already turning into a dry skin. That's what will happen to these inks if you get out too much at once. And I got out a lot so I could show you and make the wheel, but if you're doing this at home, then make sure you only get out the colors you want after you've made your wheel. This will ensure that you don't end up with a lot of dry and wasted ink. I'm going to start painting this ink wet on dry onto this paper. And what's interesting here is that although this is somewhat like watercolor, it's also not like watercolor because it doesn't keep blending once you put it down. It's almost like painting on paper without sizing on it. So it's like painting on a paper that's not watercolor paper because this is permanent ink. Once it goes down, it's almost instantly not blendable. So whatever shape you put down, if you 
take maybe a second or two to blend it, that's the time that you have. If you're not quick enough to do that, that's going to stay there. And that includes soft edges, hard edges, or edges in between. So that's a good thing and a bad thing because what that means also is that you don't have to wait for the paint to dry. You can just keep going. You can paint over that paint and not worry about it smearing or picking up. So there are some advantages if you want to do flatter areas and you know have a more comic book ink like look. And this works perfect for this painting that we're doing um, of Kai Nielsen's. Now again this is an intermediate drawing project so it finally has a figure and a horse but because it's not an advanced project this is still a picture of one of the masters from Art Nouveau and not a painting that we've made up on our own. So if you're still a little bit worried about coming up with your own picture, you can use one of these great paintings from the Golden Age of Illustration. And again, I've been using Kai Nielsen because he tends to have the loosest and simplest drawings of anybody working in the Art Nouveau movement. So you can see I've added in the pink and the purple. I did take some liberties with the headdress and I made it completely different than what Kai Nielsen had in his original painting because it was just something I wanted to do to make it more fun for myself. You can see it looks very different from his muted high key color palette. Instead this is very intense and very dark and very bold and also there's a limited color scheme so you see more limited colors than you see on his painting. Now again, I have to be very careful about how I decide to blend, but this is good for flat washes of, of color. And because I don't have a yellow, I can't make a peach or any other skin tone, and I can't make a, a convincing brown either. So what I'm going to do here is decide that I want to make her very porcelain looking so she has a bluish outline to her skin and a very light magenta or red pink, you know, um, wash to her skin. So it looks like she's either powdered herself or she has a very, very, very pale um, porcelain complexion. I've decided to do a bit of her shadows on her face with uh, more pink and a little bit of blue just to give her a little bit of definition, but not much. Remember, this is a very simple drawing that we're working from. Now I'm going to go work on the skirt some more, and this is the process I'm going to follow for the rest of this painting. I'm going to make outlines, and I'm going to then come back with the body wash and decide to leave it flat or maybe add a little bit of blends in certain areas. And that's pretty much the same format that's going to be followed for the horse. So here's the finished painting, and you can see that I've done the horse and the rest of her skirt in exactly the same method that I actually did the figure and the first half of the dress. So if you keep playing with this, you can choose the colors you want, only the colors that you've decided from your limited color scheme, and decide how best you can make them fit onto this picture. Doing this painting will be great practice for an advanced project where you come up with your own illustration. Remember, you're learning a lot from the masters of Art Nouveau, so if you like this art style, it will help you develop your own. Especially because you're doing projects with limited color schemes that you come up with, so you're making intelligent color choices. To digitally color this painting in one of many limited color schemes, go to hajrameeks.com forward slash journeycolor.